Super Bowl 55 is in the books. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are Super Bowl champions. It was a dominating performance from start to finish for a team that a lot of people, at least early and midway through the season, weren't even sure we're going to make it out of the first weekend of the playoffs. But here we are. Now, there will be lots of videos tonight and in the coming days talking about Tom Brady's legacy, talking about how good this Buccaneers team is, talking about are the Chiefs for real or are they done? Were they a flash in the pan? But I don't think there are going to be many videos talking about the nature of this Buccaneers team and how so many people in the media and just in general discourse has missed the point of what this Buccaneers team was about. And it all centers around the fact that Tom Brady won the Super Bowl MVP and he never should have. Let's discuss. Now, let's be clear, this video is not at all about talking about Tom Brady's legacy. That is a discussion that a lot of people have had, and for a lot of people, it's an open and shut case. He's the greatest quarterback that ever played the game, and certainly from the perspective of he's won seven Super Bowls, it's pretty hard to argue with that. So I'm not, this is not Tom Brady bashing. It, it's none of that. What this is, is something that I talk about a lot, which is in the national media in particular, and on social media, certain narratives get pushed to the forefront. And sometimes those narratives are accurate and sometimes they're not. But the big issue with the idea of full narratives is a lot of times if you have a narrative defining a season, you actually lose real context. You lose defining characteristics about that season. This happens in all sports. And again, it happens, the national media does it because the national media has to focus on narratives. It can't get very specific. They just don't have enough time. Uh, and you see it on social media because you don't, especially on Twitter, you don't have enough time. You don't have enough literal characters to actually discuss more in-depth narratives. But here on YouTube, we do have the time to discuss a little bit more in depth what this season has been for Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So before I start talking about how it all centers around Tom Brady winning Super Bowl MVP this year, uh, just know I'm not bashing Tom Brady. I am not a Tom Brady hater at all. I'm just talking about the generalized narrative. Tom Brady wins Super Bowl MVP. The narrative here is very simple. They've been talking about it. Jim Nance and Tony Romo were talking about it all game. The guys on the CBS pre and post game talked about it at length. This Buccaneers team was no good, and then Tom Brady showed up, and then suddenly they're good again. That was the narrative. Tom Brady made this team great. That's the narrative. And when you look at Tom Brady's actual season, it's really not that bad of a year for Brady. He completed 65% of his passes, threw for about 4,600 yards, 40 touchdowns, 12 picks. Not a bad season. I mean, it's fine. The Buccaneers finished 11-5. and five. Uh, That's a very good season for really any other kind of non-Hall of Fame level quarterback. Um, so nothing about Tom Brady's season. Is it MVP caliber? No, of course not. But I don't think anyone's arguing that he is the most valuable player, at least of the regular season. Now... We'll get, well, let's talk about his actual, let's talk about the Super Bowl stats because that, that is uh, actually pretty important. And then we'll circle back to the Buccaneers as a team because, again, that's also very, very important. Brady in the Super Bowl f throws for 21 of 29, 200 yards, and three touchdowns, no picks. It's a good game. Is it an MVP caliber game? That's a discussion we're going to get to in a second. The narrative that I want to talk about is, again, the narrative that Tom Brady somehow saved this team, that Brady's experience, I mean, the literal owner of the Buccaneers said it, where he gives this line about his dad's saying that if you want to, if you want to go down a tough road, you have to get someone who's been there or something like that. That's the narrative that Tom Brady brought this team from mediocrity to Super Bowl contender. But that's not exactly fair. Is Tom Brady a, a real credit to this team? I mean, did he have a lot to do with Tampa Bay improving the way they did? Sure, I can grant you that. Did he have everything to do? Is he the entire reason that this team is where they are right now? Not exactly. And for that, I would like to turn to something that really blew me away throughout the course of this game is Tampa Bay's 
defense. You watch this Buccaneers defense. They were fast. They were all over the field. They game planned perfectly. I mean, this was as good of a defensive performance as I have ever seen from a team in the Super Bowl. And from a Buccaneers defense that really didn't have a lot of plaudits all season, even though in reality, uh, they honestly probably should have. They were a great defense throughout the regular season. And they were a great defense because they did two things very, very well. They rushed the quarterback and they got takeaways. That's, I mean, the Buccaneers were were phenomenal at those two things. And so when you look at their yardage numbers, if you look at their touchdown numbers, if you look at even their scoring defense, nothing nothing jumps off the page in terms of the scoring defense. Uh, but in terms of what they were able to do, the kind of the kind of bend don't break mentality. That's where they were at. And even when it comes to scoring defense, they were still eighth in the league, right? They averaged uh, they averaged about 22 points a game on defense. Now let's put that into context. Sometimes if you don't have context, you can't really there, there's no way to there's no way to know you know what that number would actually mean. When you look at the average NFL offense, the average NFL offense, number 16 in the NFL in scoring this year was the Atlanta Falcons. They scored about 24 points a game, 20, almost 25 points a game. Only the bottom eight offenses in the league would not be able to win games if their defense was holding the other team to 22 points. These are team only one of those teams made the playoffs of the bottom eight offenses in the league, and it was the Washington football team. So it's not like they were a great team. But the rest of these teams, when you look at teams like the Panthers, the Eagles, the Patriots, the Broncos, the Jets, uh, the Jaguars, I mean, these these are the worst teams in the NFL. That's the level of offense that the Buccaneers would have had to have had to lose games with their defense giving up 22 points a game. What Tom Brady was asked to do as as far as the offense goes was not very much because you're not talking about I mean when you look at if you look at the defensive numbers in terms of points per game you're looking at teams like teams that were actually pretty good like the Titans giving up 27 points a game you're looking at the Browns gave up 26 points a game uh the Seahawks gave up 23 points a game so like that's the level that you're being asked to play at if you have if you're on a team whose defense gives up that many points. Again, I want to be very clear. This isn't Tom Brady bashing or anything like that. I'm just setting up this idea that we haven't talked enough about the Buccaneers defense and it culminates with the performance in this Super Bowl. Let's look specifically at the playoffs. When you look at the Buccaneers, here's what they've done from the wild card round on. They gave up 23 points to Washington, 20 points to New Orleans, 26 points to Green Bay, and then nine points to Kansas City. The top 15 offenses in the NFL average more than 26 points a game. So literally an average NFL offense would have been able to beat every single team on that list in terms, just in terms of playing their average game. And then of course in this Super Bowl, the numbers don't lie. The Kansas City Chiefs scored nine points. It's the first time in Patrick Mahomes' professional career that he's been held to single digits. They held Mahomes to maybe the worst game of his career. They were dogging him all day. They forced uh, they forced two interceptions from him. When you talk about the Mahomes that showed up last year in the Super Bowl, it was like watching a completely different player. And suffice to say that any offense in the NFL, every single one averages more than nine points a game. Even the Jets average 15 points a game. What about the defense? Let's talk about the Buccaneers defense. When you talk about improvement, the big difference, and this gets back to the narrative that we're talking about, the big difference between the Buccaneers last year and the Buccaneers this year, according to so many people in the media, is Tom Brady. That was the difference. But is that true? Not necessarily. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense last year gave up over 28 points per game. The Bucks defense this year gave up 22. Last year their defensive rank this year, right? If they had given up, if they had given up about 28 points per game this year, it would have ranked them ranked them 26th in the league this year in scoring defense. As it is, they're 8th. That is the kind of improvement, a 6-point improvement, a touchdown per game improvement. That's what we're talking about. The Bucks offense this year when you look at their average points per game, they average 30, they average about just under 31 points a game. When you're held, when you're holding opponents to 22, pretty easy to win. If you're holding your opponents only to 28, that's a different story if you're only averaging 30. My point here is 
The story right now should be the defense. It should be the defense. This is nothing about Tom Brady. Tom Brady was good. That defense was great. Look at look at what the defense did against Patrick Mahomes and that Chiefs offense. Did anyone, did anyone see that coming? I didn't think it was possible for a defense to do something like that to Patrick Mahomes and, and that Chiefs offense. But here we are. Let's get back to Tom Brady's Super Bowl MVP candidacy. As I said, 21 of 29, 200 yards, three touchdowns. That is the lowest, that is the lowest number of passing yards for a Super Bowl MVP since Tom Brady in Super Bowl 36, a game that, by the way, finished 20 to 17, and the biggest story coming out of it was U2 doing the halftime show. Brady threw for 145 yards in that game. In the interim, you have Tom Brady winning the MVP with 328 yards. Last year, Mahomes wins the MVP with 286 yards. You have Nick Foles winning it with 373 yards. Tom Brady won the MVP in Super Bowl 51 with 466 yards. That's the level of performance that we're asking from MVPs. I'm not going to tell you a certain, a specific player that I think should have been the MVP or not. I think it could have been Leonard Fournette. I think it could have been Rob Gronkowski. I think it could have and should have been anyone on the defense. I think if you could, if you can only give it to one person, give it to the defensive coordinator. That was the big story. When you're talking about most valuable, your quarterback that throws for 200 yards in a game that you held the opposing team to nine points, not exactly valuable. I'm pretty sure you could plug in a lot of NFL quarterbacks and they would be able to lead an offense like that. Now, the offense plays off the defense, so obviously I'm not saying that Tom Brady was completely expendable in this game, but again, this all comes back to the central point that I'm making right here. Is this bashing Tom Brady? No, this is talking about the narrative that Tom Brady was the sole factor in improving this Buccaneers team from the 2019 season into the 2020 season. And that's not the case. We've seen that the defense, the, the level that the defense improved to the tune of six fewer points per game on average, that is an incredible improvement. That is the difference. The defense causing turnovers, the defense rushing the quarterback like they did so well in the Super Bowl. That is the difference. Tom Brady made a big difference specifically to the offense. But the offense also had a whole lot of weapons. And then one of the biggest stories in this playoffs was not Tom Brady, it was Leonard Fournette. And Fournette starting to play better than he had uh, really in about three years. That's the story. I say all this because it it frustrates me, not, not, not Tom Brady. What frustrates me is a national media narrative that starts to become the narrative that fans with more time to look at specific things that we talk about. And so when we look at Tom Brady's numbers, when we look at how it compares to the Buccaneers defense that has been the real story this year, we see that the narrative of Tom Brady coming in and taking this eight and eight team and turning them into a Super Bowl winner, it's not exactly accurate. A lot of work happened on the defensive side of the ball to help the Buccaneers do what they did. And when you look at the way that the Buccaneers offense improved versus the defense, the defense improves to the tune of about six points per game, as I mentioned, but the offense, they gain about two points per game on average, an improvement to be sure. But when you talk about game changing in terms of this side of the ball is playing so much better than they did last year, it's about the defense, not the offense. My point here is a general one. When you hear a narrative from the national media, when you watch national, nationally televised games of any sport, understand that what they're telling you is only a small piece of what might actually be going on. The narrative focuses around Tom Brady because that's the name that everybody knows. People, non-committed football fans, certainly in the Super Bowl, probably don't know any players on the Buccaneers defense. And if they do, maybe it's Ndama King Su. It might be the only one, but they don't know the rest of them. So you can't craft a narrative around a specific team's defense if people don't really know about it. And you want proof? Let's t let's let's look at Super Bowls where the defense was the narrative. Super Bowl 50, the Broncos defense was the narrative. Von Miller ended up winning Super, uh, Super Bowl 50 MVP. Oh, by the way, Von Miller was the most recognizable player on that team. Last time before that, the defense was really the narrative. That was Super Bowl 35 when Baltimore won. Ray Lewis, the most recognizable player on that defense, won MVP. Let's talk about when the Ravens beat the 49ers in uh, what was that Super Bowl Super Bowl 48 I think that was the Ravens defense that was the big narrative of that game 
And who was the most recognizable player on that Ravens defense? Ray Lewis. You need a recognizable player to really craft the narrative. Tom Brady's the most recognizable player on this Buccaneers team. That's the narrative. But I guarantee you, if Ndama Kung Su was having a Pro Bowl level season, if he had 13 sacks this year, then suddenly I bet you the Buccaneers defense would be the huge narrative. Is that necessarily the national media's fault? Not entirely, because I understand you want to craft narratives around players, specifically in the Super Bowl, that the casual fan would know. An average of about 44 million people will watch the conference championship games. Over 100 million people watch the Super Bowl. So you're talking about 60 to 70 million people who are not even committed enough football fans to watch the conference championship games. These people need names that they can recognize. However, the national media is also responsible for creating those names in the first place. If the national media all, all season had talked more about players like Devin White, players like Vita Vea, it would have gone a long way into the, the the more casual fans starting to know starting to know some of these players like Levante David. I mean David and White to me, those were the two most important players on the field. What they did throughout the course of the game was unbelievable the, the way that they played against the Chiefs defense. If the national media all season had done a big a better job of introducing us to these players, introducing more casual fans to these players, then they would suddenly be bigger names so that you could then talk about them in the Super Bowl. So while I don't necessarily blame Romo and Nance and all the CBS guys from uh, I don't necessarily blame them for talking about Tom Brady when they know that so much of their audience really only knows Tom Brady and probably Patrick Mahomes, and that's going to be about it. Maybe Travis Kelsey. I don't blame them for that. I do blame them for not talking about this Tampa Bay defense earlier in the season. We, as committed fans, have known how good this Buccaneers defense is for a long time. I didn't realize they were this good, but I knew they were good, and I'm sure all of you did too. But the casual fans, they probably didn't. They know Tom Brady. And they know that Tom Brady is a great quarterback. That's what they've been told. Is that is that wrong? Absolutely not. However, is it the most important, is it the most pertinent thing that is going on this year when it comes to stories about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? No. The defense is the most relevant thing about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we're going to have a lot of people walk away from this game and say, God, this was a boring game. When I think for a lot of us who are really big football fans, this was a great game to watch. This was a fantastic game to watch because of the tactical nature of the way the Buccaneers defense played against this Chiefs team. This was one of the most well-crafted defensive game plans I have ever seen, especially in a Super Bowl. And it was very fun for me to watch. But casual fans I was watching with wasn't fun for them. And maybe it would have been if the national media had done a better job all year of introducing this Buccaneers team and what they're about. So when you hear a narrative from the national media, understand that they have a game to play. They have a role to play. And they're trying to get, not you, they're trying to get casual fans into, they're trying to get casual fans to watch games. Those of us who will watch the NFL, those of us who are committed football fans and will watch, we're going to watch regardless of what the narrative may be. But the, the few million casual fans that may not watch if they don't know anyone involved in the game, the narrative has to be someone they know. So for those of us who are committed, when we watch these games, when we listen to these narratives, just understand that they're based in truth, but they may be lacking context. Tom Brady was not the most valuable player on the field in the Super Bowl. He was the most recognizable. But for all of us who are committed football fans, we watched this game and came away thinking, my God, this Buccaneers defense is for real. So just remember that whenever we hear something come from the national media. Thank you so much. If you disagree with me on anything, remember this is not Tom Brady bashing. I, I have no hatred for Tom Brady whatsoever. I have a lot of respect for the guy. So it's not about that at all. But if you disagree with me, if you think that I'm wrongheaded somewhere in here, please let me know in the comments. Let's have a discussion. I always love doing that. Thank you so much. Subscribe. We appreciate you.